different components to do this. So we need some 10k resistors, some signal diodes, and a 1k resistor. So I think we're going to start with resistors and diodes first. So what do we need? We need SRAMs. It's SRAM. Wants to come out of the tube. Okay, so we have an SRAM. It's Alliance AS6C62256, so 256 at the end, 256 kilobytes. Um, so that's our SRAM. The line decoder for the SRAM. So these are dual 2 to 4 line decoder 16 dip. Now, I was going to socket all this stuff. I don't believe it's going to fit in a cartridge case if I do. Um, so I have one of these guys. It's like a really low profile one. Um, you, I have other ones. I have to figure out the polarity on this. Uh, plus. Yeah. So the beauty of these is. You can see I can kind of solder that place. Now it has, I'll take photos of this so it's easier to show you, but it has one single pin on this side and I had two pins here, so I just bent them down solder them flat. Right guys, so I've got good old uh, Sonic 2 so we're going to open this up see if our PCB will fit inside, it might not might not. So, I don't know if you can see but I don't think regular cartridge is going to hold, or a regular shell like this is going to hold PCB and the CR2032. You know what? I could always put a CR2032 in it. Just to see. Radio. So we have a CR2032. Pop it in there. Captain tape over. Contacts. So that just about fits. Just about fits. Obviously, you take the battery out before you go soldering it, Dermot, but that just about fits. We just flood it and see what happens. Got some plastic here as well. Should have perhaps put some glue underneath it. You can see it's pushing against one of these lips here, so when I get a cartridge for this, I can simply see it? It's here. This thing. Yeah. Yeah, so when I get a cartridge shell for this, I can cut away this. This piece of plastic, I can cut that away. It should be fine. It fits with a squeeze at the moment, so it's good. Okay, battery. Give up the ghost. Come out of there. So, um, I guess the next thing would be our line decoder. This? It's not an IC. Oh, to put in our N channel MOSFETs, our ceramic capacitors, and our electrolytic capacitors. So, so um, we've hit our first hurdle. Um, the electrolytic cap there. That's stopping us from putting it in our case. There is room to the side. I could mount it a slightly different way. I was more worried about the battery above than I was the electrolytic cap. Oh yeah, that's much lower profile now. 
way lower profile. That will fit perfectly in your case, I'd imagine. Right, so let me clear off some space and get my um, Universal Programmer out and we'll program the ROM. I've showed how to use the programmer before, so I'm not going to show screen. So while the EEPROM's programming, let's take a quick closer look at the board. So you may notice there it says uh, connect pin 32 here when using the 27C160. So when the EEPROM is programmed, we'll uh, kind of move that pin with the snipe nose pliers. Um, but the smaller capacitor, C2, the 22 microfarad, um, definitely fits better. Everything seems to fit better. I'll obviously have to get some isopropanol to this. Uh, isopop. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. It's going to focus there, but this little pin here is out on the f other via, outer via, 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 viaduct. Okay, so. Yep. <laughs> we are ready to rock and roll. Ready to test this out. So, will it fit in the cart case? Yeah, it's gonna fit, guys. It's gonna fit nice. Perfect fit inside a Sonic the Hedgehog case. So, come on. Imagine if the CR 2032 is the thing that I tripped up on that. Comparison. I'm going to clean it with isopropanol, but for now, isopropyl, isopropanol, isopop, but for now, it goes in here. It's a snug fit. It does fit. Now, there are other cheaper. Or not even cheaper. There are other CR2032 holders that I don't think would do the job. Black ones. Um, again, they're through hole, but uh, I just think they are. They sit up too proud from the board. So, like when I was buying, ordering these from DigiKey, that was a pain. Never know what you're truly paying when you purchase anything from DigiKey in Europe because you pay your import on a lot of stuff but anyways I digress um I picked them for height tried to get ones that were really profile so Mega Man Wily Wars masquerading as Sonic 2 batteries installed everything's ready to go Let's pop it in the Mega Drive and see if it works. Flick it on. Produced by or under license from Sega and it's in PAL mode. Sweet. Hmm. Hold on a second, guys. No, doesn't appear to work. I'm going to assume that it's the actual jammed in there. Uh, but, um, I would assume it's the game itself and um, just doesn't like. That form of save. It's Mega Man Wily Wars that's problem. So 
I'm not going to do it now. I'll possibly do it tomorrow. I'm going to desolder this. And we'll try a different game. So, I realised what was wrong. We had to patch our version of Mega Man The Wily Wars. So, it means I'm going to have to desolder that. Um, I was testing a Mega Drive out the other day and I also created um, a copy of uh, Shadow Dancer, Secret of Shinobi. Um, it's on a 27C800. Um, I don't. I want to desolder this and basically get this. Use this board for for another um for another cart because I don't have that many. T well, I have a few twenty seven C eight hundreds, but I don't want to waste one when I have an EEPROM now of the correct size. So we're gonna desolder this. I'm not. It's. I'll put it in the eraser. I don't need a copy of. Uh, I only made it for testing. I have a, uh, an original genuine copy of uh, Shadow Dancer: The Secret of Shinobi. So I'm gonna convert this into another game. So, uh, with that said, let me um, just bring up my folder and we'll have a look because I'm, I'm not, not only am I going to like fix uh, Mega Man The Wily Wars, I've also put some captain tape over the edge. Uh, the reason for that is um, it's clean now and I don't want to get any flux on it. I'd rather just cover it, desolder, clean the board and not worry about flux getting in my cartridge port. You may notice we have Castlevania Bloodlines for Genesis. I have uh, the bite swap version in there. Uh, Mega Man The Wily Wars. You may notice now that we have a patched version, uh, both a bite swap version and um, patched and a regular one um, that we're going to try. Uh, Robocop versus the Terminator. I have that uh, bite swapped. So we have all our bite swapping done. Um, all that kind of stuff. All we have to do is program our EEPROMs. So um, I'm going to go back over to the folder and check my sizes just to see what size ROMs I need. Okay, so 2 megabyte. I need a 2 megabyte Probably going to need, there's probably more than one two megabyte in this. But, um, give me a sec. We'll do it in an order, that way. Castlevania Bloodlines is a one megabyte. So, that's 27C800, I believe. Am I right? Yeah, slowly starting to learn these numbers. Um, repetition, I guess. So, there are boards that we're going to use for the regular ones. Um, uh, what's here? Yeah, there are 160s in that pile. So I have like a, a sandwich of 27C160s. Um, okay, this looks like it's mixed. 27C400. 27C160. C800s. Yeah. See, I've only kind of two or three of those, so I want to kind of get that one back off the board. 27C800s. So 800 for 800. That's my first project though. Um, so the next one we need is a 160, the 2 megabyte. I found out also from uh, John Riggs on one of his videos, he left in the comments section that let's say it's a 3 megabyte uh, ROM file, then use a 4 megabyte EEPROM that's simple and fill with FFF. Um, yeah, so that's good. So that's a 27C 160, 2 megabyte. So again, these are the boards I use. No focus? Yeah. So you can see the website there, retroelectronic.com. Really cool boards. Here's the kind of truth table, I guess, for the uh, jumper sentence there. So we're going to use this one for Robocop vs. The Terminator. Again, um, a very desirable game, a game I remember renting out as a kid in a local video store. I didn't actually have... Um, I didn't have a copy of it growing up, and um, I think the gore and stuff, my parents weren't that fond of it, even though I probably, probably see me playing Mortal Kombat and stuff, they just had a problem with that game, and um, I loved it, still do, it's a great game, and I actually prefer the Mega Drive version. So this is the one that uh, Shadow Dancer, the secret of Shinobi, that we're going to desolder, and fix the pins, and get rid of the barge wire, and we're going to put uh, Castlevania Bloodlines on this. 
get the EEPROM eraser out. I want to kind of do all the EEPROM stuff before I get my soldering equipment out. Uh, so, Castlevania Bloodlines, byte swapped version, open. Uh, binary, okay. So, right, options, uh, select chip, uh, um, ST, 27C800. Ugh, I can barely read text on some of these. Which is assigned there a pull. 27C800, okay, yeah. We'll just hit go. Pass the blank check. Come on. Nice. So, blank check worked. So this could take a while, and the program's going to say it's not responding. Don't panic. Uh, it is responding. It's just doing its thing. What we'll do now is I'm just going to put it with its uh, PCB. I did want to do, I was considering making, um, instead of Mega Man for this cart, I was considering of doing Wonder Boy in Monster World, which is also a nice game. Um, yeah. I may do Wonder Boy in Monster World at some stage, but I only have one of these, so. We will start with the uh, SRAM cart. So, yeah, let me clear off my USB, my um, my EPROMs and stuff, and uh, we get to uh, solder. So, I have my desoldering station set up and my soldering iron. I have a nice stack here because I don't really have that much space, but we're going to desolder this chip. Um, we're also going to straighten the legs and get rid of the barge wire. So I'll need um, I'll need some other stuff to do this. I'll need some braid, some wick, just to get rid of the solder on that. Okay, so, a bit of a cleanup needed. You can see this one pin here. Kind of the solder gone all the way through, which is what you want, but it um, had some trouble heating up. So all my uh, solder contacts, my vias, 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 are good. <coughs> Chips, legs don't look too badly mangled. So I'll just clean them up a little. But first I have to fix the uh fix the pins that I had bent. So snipe nose pliers are brilliant for that. You can just get a, a whole load of pins and just straighten them up that. I think this one's going to come off easier because um, it has uh, plated contacts and yeah let's hope it goes easier I say that now I don't know. Nice. Right, so let's get cracking. Okay, so um, that's removed, nice and clean. Check all the vias now, but they seem to be fine. Yeah, they seem to be fine. Okay, so that's the windows cleaned. That there for later. I can use that cotton swab again. 
So always clean. I always have to clean that station immediately after using, because um, as many you know, your stations are rather popular. A lot of people have it. Um, yeah, do not leave. Turn it off without cleaning it. I've done it by mistake myself a few times. It's a frickin' nightmare. Right, so I'm gonna pop my EPROMs in the program, or in the eraser rather, and uh, we'll get to soldering up our boards. We'll go from um, left to right along my little shelf here as I've been lined up. So we got a, a 10k resistor and a 47. Uh, microfarad capacitor in there but looking at the truth table we're using a 27c160 so that means that we've got to solder up our jumper on sp1 so um i've had trouble getting solder blobs to join in the past on these boards so i'm just going to use a little bit of uh, a component leg Show you that. Yeah, it's hard to see there, but we got our little jumper done. So this is Robocop versus the Terminator. So I desoldered the other one. Focus. There you go. So this is uh Castlevania Bloodlines. It still needs some flux and stuff cleaned off. We'll test it first before we do that. We may as well wick this as well. Um, we'll do clean up on all the carts afterward. But this is Castlevania Bloodlines on a 27C800. So we're about to solder on Robocop versus the Terminator. Let's do it. Um, this is a new EEPROM, so its legs are in the to be brought in. Radio. Robocop versus the Terminator done. So get some black tape. Robocop versus the Terminator. Ready to rock and roll. Uh, it needs a bit of a cleaning, which should be fine for testing for now. UE prom for uh Mega Man Wily Wars. If this doesn't work this EEPROM. If it doesn't work, I have a backup plan. We'll involve desoldering this and wiping it again, but I, rather than patch a ROM, I know the Japanese version of Mega Man, also known as Rockman, uh, in Japan, will, because the Rockman, the Japanese version, used an SRAM rather than a, a, a different solution. So, let's get this in there. Oh, I didn't bend out the pin. <sighs> At least I realize now before I stop, before I kept going. All the way soldered in. So, let's get our desoldering station warmed up. It's a pain in the ass. So guys, hopefully that's the end of the soldering. Hopefully. 
So we've got our carts made up. So the first one we're going to try out is uh, Robocop versus the Terminator. So poor old Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is going to be the shell we're going to use for this. Just so I don't scratch the cartridge bay doors. It's okay. Robocop versus the Terminator, guys. Excellent. Excellent. It works. Nice. So, spin around. I used to rent this game as a kid. Um, let's do in-game reset. And it works. Excellent. So next is uh, Castlevania Bloodlines. Okay, Castlevania Bloodlines. So definitely Robocop vs. the Terminator is worth creating because it's a hard one to find and it's usually pretty expensive. So Castlevania Bloodlines works. John Morris. So we're just going to skip through the arch. Yeah, it works. So we're going to try in-game reset. There we go. In-game reset. Nice. Okay. So our final game to test is Mega Man The Wily Wars. So this one's got the battery um, SRAM and it fits in uh, rather snugly. Uh, you can kind of see there the CR2032. Are you going to focus? No, you're not going to focus. But it fits real snug. So, right. Mega Man, Wily Wars. This is a patched version of the ROM. As the original ROM didn't really work with SRAM. It had a different type of... Uh, I believe it was an EE prom. That it used for save. So I won't cover how to patch ROMs in this video, but it's not as hard as you'd think. So Mega Man the Wily Wars. And as you can see I'm running this is an EU game, but it, it runs fine in uh, load file, yeah. So we'll try Mega Man 3. Hard man. Doesn't matter who we who we fight or what level we take on. It's just a test. I love the art. Okay, so I have no idea what I'm doing. Get away, B. Okay, so it works. So, in-game reset. Yay! In-game reset works. So, all our carts are working, guys. So, that's cool. So, guys, if you're interested in the uh, Genesis Repro PCB I used with the SRAM uh, save backup, um, you can check out Mr. Tentacle's page over on uh, Tindy.com. Tindy's a great site. I've used it for quite a few things. It's a great way of... Uh, of kind of dealing with creators directly and supporting open source hardware development. Um, definitely worth checking out and I'll leave a link to his page uh, in the description. Um, the actual ROM itself that I patched, uh, the patch I used is available and I'll leave a link for it again in the description from ROM, romhacking.net. Um, they'll also have uh, a tool in order to patch the ROM there, uh, a Windows uh, GUI tool rather than having to do it through um, uh, through command line in DOS or something like that. So Lunar IPS, um, I'll leave a link to that page in it as well. 
So we also checked out uh, RetroElectronic.com's uh, Sega Mega Drive uh, PCBs in this video again. And uh, I'll leave a link to those. They're definitely worth checking out. Um, I went with these. I know there's uh, open source uh, uh, Gerber files out there that you can take to the likes of uh, Dirty PCB. I believe they even have them. You don't have to give them the Gerber files. They already have them there. You can just order them. It worked out to be the same price, roughly, if not a little bit cheaper to go with Retro Electronics uh, PCBs. Um, I have some Mega Drive cartridge shells on the way from Dragonbox.de. Uh, so I ordered a few of those uh, to use in kind of some of the repros we've made already and some I plan on making. So in the next video, that's what we'll do. We'll have a look at those uh, from Dragonbox. I'll do a quick review and kind of we'll have a mess around with them. So cool, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Chat to you all again.